It's a lot you can do with frozen food. As long the food has been frozen from fresh, which is the whole idea of this. It's absolutely impeccably perfect. I mean, there is nothing wrong with that. When you think what is the, the, the frozen market representing in percentage is enormous. And when you think it's a lot of varieties, it's quite versatile, but there's no a real brand who has that level of understanding about cooking. It's turning something which was very conventional, very traditional, to something more modern and more original. And I think that's, that's the trick. How was the, the food? You obviously that didn't like it. was Joking. lovely. Absolutely delicious. <laughs> and it's a fantastic challenge because there's so much to do. The first uh, dish I wish to introduce is the chicken with lemon and honey thyme. Now, obviously you need a hot pan, some lovely cut of chickens, and the seasoning. Now I'm using some sea salt, and the sea salt is going to allow to crystallize and give that lovely caramelization into the chicken. Now I'm using some uh, proper olive oil. The pan is about to be, obviously, a uh, smoking burn. The flavor dyed with the olive oil, very hot olive oil, and the, and the natural seasoning give that lovely roasty fried flavor and that's what people like. Now what I want to do is to introduce the herbs. Now this has been picked from my uh, gastro garden. They've been kept in water. They smell fantastic. This is thyme and this is going to give that lovely fantastic aroma. Using this at that temperature will automatically expose some residue in the bottom of the pan. And this is what we're going to make the sauce with. And that sauce is where everybody is so going to be like, oh my god, that's a lovely flavor. And I'm not joking, by the way. And you're going to be licking the sauce with your fingers. Okay? Now we're going to introduce the honey. Acacia, I think, is probably the most subtle honey. And you can see the honey is quickly changing colors. The lemon is going to obviously break out the test. What I want to do is to give a little bit of extension by adding some stock. You can't expect the chicken giving too much test as it is. Therefore, you got to find a combination by using the chicken and some other ingredients, which is going to be the foundation of the dish. Now, you can see the chicken stock, the honey, and the lemon has now come to some kind of a thickness. Now we've got a test, we've got a smell. Now the texture. It's very important that texture is going to be right. Okay, you don't want something which is watery or full of liquid, no. You want something which is delivered the test, combined well with the chicken, and also give that lovely texture. It's the cream. I just want to use enough to combine everything together, give that lovely smooth texture. Don't boil the cream. Because there is so much quality in the cream, I don't want to boil it or sterilize, it'll be stupid. And what I want to do is now, not putting the sauce on the chicken, is to introduce the chicken into the sauce. It's very important because, you know, introduction in life is very important. Why is it not the same? Because you can see clearly, in the bottom of my plate, I've got some juice. Juice which has been extracted from the chicken. This is not going to go to the sauce. That is not going to the sauce. This is going to go separately somewhere else. Now, we're only dealing with this. And the sauce is coating correctly and is looking absolutely perfect. Now, we're going to move on to the foundation of the dish, which is the mash. I've got to say that I'm quite fortunate because my mother made the best mash ever in, on the planet. First, you boil your potatoes as normal, with the skin or without, it doesn't matter. What is important is when you've boiled it for a good 15 minutes, just leave them in the water, about 20 minutes in the hot water. Then take them off and put them straight into the oven. And what's happened in the oven is you are completely drying all the liquid and this is the best way of making a mash. I'm going to make sure that I'm not just dealing now to cook in my own pub or in my own restaurant. I'm thinking about somebody who's going to enjoy that maybe in a few months' time. Okay? And it should be impeccable the same way as I'm cooking now. Now, what I want is to use a crusher. I think a great mash is also about 
having that little chunkiness. You don't want to put it in the food processor because you don't want something too like, uh, you know, soft and too perfect. I'm going to introduce a little bit of stock, a little bit of cream, or just a knob of unsalted butter. Now you can see the butter is mixing very well with the mash. What I want to do is to make sure that the mash remains a little bit dry. If anything happens to become a little bit too liquid from the defrosting situation, the mash will absorb the liquid. Now I'm going to introduce some spring onions. I want to make sure I keep the green, I keep that sharpness of the, of the test, and we're going to combine that with the mash. Now you might say, hang on a minute, you're not boiling your, your spring onions. No. The most radical way of cooking vegetable, green vegetable, is boiling them in hot water, take them off in cold water, and then put them on the cloth. No. Because by doing so, you lose most of the vitamins, the taste, and also the colors. Okay? Now, I'm adding a little bit of stock just to finish cooking the spring onions as it is, and to make sure I extract every single asset of liquid. And now it's time to mix it with the mash. As a foundation, we've got the mash, the spring onions, which smell fantastic, believe it or not. And then finally, the chicken. Et voilà, the final dish, roast chicken with thyme, lemon and honey, served with some spring onion and mash. On your plate, at home. Now I'm going to serve it to table 10, I'm going to charge 30 pan. <laughs> My fridge, I've got a massive fridge. I should not say that, but I was so much food. I quickly get some milk for my coffee, and I see all that food, I said, when am I going to eat this, this? And it makes me sad because I hope I'm going to come back for lunch before I fly there, or I'm going to take some food, you know, this and that. And I know this is going to be wasted. I never waste nothing from my freezer. And I eat ice coolie as good. It's probably the convenience of having something which has been made with a lot of skill, care, passion, and it's been kept in that box. It's like a magical box, basically, where the thing is coming out exactly the way it was in. Packet might look very nice, but what is inside is more important. Now we're talking desserts. Pancakes. The best pancake in the world. First, before we start, I'm going to show you how to make a proper pancake. It's very simple. You need one egg, just like this. Then, when you mix it, you add your flour. The flour is going to be like a foundation. And by mixing the flour carefully with the liquid of the egg, you end up with some kind of a paste. Most people add the milk from the beginning, which is a complete mistake. The milk should be always introduced as the final part. I end up with something which is liquid, no lumps, done. I'm going to add a little bit of sugar because we're making some fabulous pancakes, okay? You can always add a little bit of sugar, a tiny little piece of salt, and then finally the milk. And that's where the milk should never be first because if you want to save your time and get the proper mixture, now you can look now. I get exactly what I want in a very much short of time. Now, if you have this, you got the consistencies and the right thickness to make the perfect pancake. Usually, you try to put a little bit of butter like this, then you put your mixture, then you cook on both sides, and then you put another piece of butter for the next pancake, and so on. If you have to make 100 different pancakes, you have to put different knobs of butter, which I think is very unfair. If I give you a tip, add the butter into the mix, like this, and that's it. I don't have to put butter every time, which is very important. Now, I've got this special pan for pancakes. Just put it back on the, on the heat, and it's very important that the pan's going to be very, very hot. There we are. From the middle, and just 